Hello, Andrew. Hello, um, Dr. Taylor. I think I just made you the host. Um, okay. So you should so have. All right. There, I see people in the waiting room. Are you handling that? Oh, shoot. You know what? Sorry. Can you, um, I thought it would, I'm going to reclaim host and then make you co-host um, so that I can let people in and you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Did and then Why can't I see the waiting room now? Dr. Taylor, does it still say that there are people in the waiting room for you? No, uh, I well, I let some people in. Oh, okay, great, great. Now I'm just, I'll work on my document. And and you said you will need breakout rooms with five to seven in each? Yes, yes, Perfect. and okay. I'm just, see if I can share my screen. Oh, I'm. I guess I am still getting some people. I'll, I'll try to let them in. I, I, I can. Uh, I can make sure people get in, um, so that you can uh, okay. set your presentation up. All right. I, I guess uh, I want to do one more thing. I want to stop my share for a minute. We're right on the dot here. Thank you, everyone who's here. Appreciate it. So, Andrew, you might see me twice. Uh, or oh, oh, they're actually asking for. All right, everyone, thank you for being here. We were getting our numbers up for up to 21. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead on and share my screen. All right. So Andrew, you are facilitating uh, the breakout rooms and also the rest that's happening. So thank you. I see uh, Professor Bills, one of my colleagues here. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here. And today we're going to just kind of investigate a little bit about uh, supporting candidates of color. Uh, and we're trying to do this by creating a support system through the university and K-12 educational environments. So we know that's kind of challenging because sometimes we're as, when we're supervising student teachers or teacher candidates, we kind of get them as they are and then we start working with them. But the idea is that we'll be able to, to have a more influential role uh, impact even greater than we have. Uh, I'm from uh, Jessup University, and I'm excited to be here with you all. Um, so we'll just get started here. This is a little bit about my kind of like my background in terms of experience and working with as a as a supervisor. I do it here. I, well, actually, our, our our director, Professor Bills, is here, but I also teach in the program, which I think is an advantage when you can teach in the program and also supervise students. And I've done the same thing uh, at University of the Pacific and then served as supervisor for both uh, SCOE and UMass Global. Uh, 
and then I've done some administrating coaching with uh, in Placer County. So that's when the people are, are working, clear their credential at that level. And we are working with the supervisor, supervising um, administrators. And then my own personal experience, basically, uh, I've been a principal, uh, uh, vice principal, teacher, I've worked in some school districts. So I think it's it's very interesting, at least from my experiential learning level, to be an educator uh, at K-12 and then trying to move forward into higher education and working to help our future st students. Of course, it does give us a little bit of an advantage to kind of know what they're going to expect. That's why it's good to have many of you out there. I just want to talk briefly about our norms. Uh, we are having this, this is being recorded. Just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. And we would certainly appreciate uh, you being uh, very uh, much involved in this. And I know Andrew is going to help me with the chat as well to make sure that I I, I'm not missing out when people have questions. Uh, so you're encouraged to, to do uh, the participation and then also uh, encouraged to uh, give your, your views and opinions and everybody's respected. We'll have some breakout sessions where we'll work together. And I think uh, at least from the previous feedback, it's most important that you have time to kind of work together to talk about what what you're doing or what's successful. And then uh, a few days later, you'll receive the, the workshop evaluation. And we appreciate it because we just want to kind of meet your needs and, and exceed them in cases, all right? Uh, a little bit about what we are, are doing today in terms of the agenda, um, just a little bit of an introduction. And then we have an activity for you. We're gonna start just in a few minutes and uh, then kind of look at some data uh, just in education. And we'll have a breakout room where we will work with the, um, it'll be a pallet, a, a padlet that is, I should say. And then we would have another breakout session share out to kind of like you just tell us what you talked about there. We'll get back to the group and talk about a few things. And the idea is, though, we want to leave with some tools to work with teachers of color. Now, one thing I want to say to you, because it's kind of like the question that comes up anytime you try to work with uh, either students of color or teachers of color, then you people will say, well, I want everyone to succeed. And it's like, I, well, it's, there's no one that I don't want to succeed. And I agree. We want everyone to succeed. But this is just kind of looking at a way that may be helpful, may help for everyone, but it's also a way to kind of to help uh, our, our, our teacher candidates of color as we move forward. All right. So let's move. So what we're going to do now, there's an activity. Uh, and uh, Andrew, I'm hoping you can put this link in the in the chat box so that people can go to it. You're going to click on this activity. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill your name out in the location below whatever the statement is. So let me um, let's see if I can just get one of those locations for you and, and just to kind of show you a little bit here. Hopefully I can, it'll show up on my screen. I, I don't think it is right now, but I've got a link right here. Let's see if that shows up. Okay, looks like it's not showing there, so I need to unshare, I believe. So, Andrew, is that in the uh, chat box now, the link? Okay, it is I there. just posted it. Okay, it's there. So I'm just going to stop my, my uh, sharing for a moment just so that we can go to this document, and hopefully this document will show up. And and you can kind of see where you put your name and start typing in. So let me share my screen. And 
you can see it on here in real time now. I think you can actually see the document. So start. So the first one, you have supervised more than five teacher candidates in the semester. Type your name if that's true. Then you go to the next one. And I said, look at that. I see all those names going. I could, could almost make this like a race. And there goes Matt Wallace. And here comes Andrew Hood. And I, I see these names being set down here in those areas. Uh, supervised candidates from more than one university program. The names are going there. All right, good. We're seeing this in real time as you participate. All right, professional development. Lots of people there. You have uh, a supervised a teacher candidate of color. Lots, yeah. I know you're typing over each other, but that's okay. As long as it, it needs to go, make it happen there. That's it. You have supervised uh, more than one teacher of color, okay. Uh, you've modeled a lesson for a candidate. And I know this will be one you say, well, this is good for everyone too, right? Look at these names going in there. Wow. Some of you are in any, almost in every category. My goodness. Uh, all right, let's see. And it's, I know it's kind of extensive, but I wanted to kind of get an idea a little bit uh, with this and see where we are. So some of them are specific to teachers of colors and others are just regular, just teaching period. Okay. Those of you just coming in, uh, Andrew, we may have to re repost it in the uh, in the chat box because I don't think it's there when they first sign in. So I have some more people coming in. All right. Yes. I like it. Kristen and Amy, I might be asking you about this. You have consistently collaborated with the university faculty and the teacher candidate. Uh, that's good. Good, good. And so we're go we're getting to some, I know people are moving through gracefully. Lynette, welcome. We've got a lot going on, but I'm pleased to see your names going in these spots. And if, if they aren't going in certain spots, maybe that's an area of growth. Maybe it's something we can do eventually. So Andrew, I might extend this a little bit more because <laughs> it takes a while to get that. I know we talked about it doing something different okay yeah all right i'm just excited to see so many people doing so many things all right denise denise i see you predominantly that you've advised the teacher candidate about a sst isn't it great when you all can just tell them ahead of time and so they'll know what to even bring to an SST meeting or an yes. IEP meeting? <laughs> we'll give just a few more moments on this. Look at where you are. You Lots of spaces, lots of experience here. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> yes, I know it's it's moving fast, Angela. It's moving way too fast. Uh, but you can just try to put your name in where you can. When I do this in the classroom, by the way, is it's it's the same thing. Uh, students are all over each other, but they they're right there in front of me in, in person. And so we have good dialogue about it. Okay, one more minute. All right. So, uh, as we get down to these last 30 seconds, I'm just, I want you to kind of look at what we have here and, uh, and kind of 
maybe any takeaways you might have from this, if you could share them out. Okay, and you can continue on, but let's let's just think for a moment. Uh, and I haven't seen, you can do this either in the chat or you can just raise your hand to be recognized or just speak out. What 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 uh, are you seeing here that you find interesting, intriguing? Do I need to do the Jeopardy music? Da, 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 Okay, I see a hand up. Is that Michelle? Okay. Yes, really, really quickly, Dr. Taylor. Um, this is would be I. I am the, actually the field supervisor. Um, I'm the director, so I do work with the supervisors and do all the placements and work with all the teacher candidates. So this would be a great activity for me to open my school year with at our first uh, t uh, supervisors meeting. Uh -huh. um, it's you know, so I get so we have new people joining us. So the, ways, the new people can see the expertise in the room and then also um, learn. This is a great activity. Are we gonna have, be able to have um, access to the questions? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I'll okay. Uh, put, uh, but you know, I just kind of grabbed them from the things we've experienced and you might right. even have some that you might think more interesting to put or that you wanna know that are specific to your, uh, your teacher program, et cetera. Okay. But, but when we look at this though, I, first of all, I, I like the number of, we've got a number of people who have uh, either hired uh, a, a teacher candidate of color or work with them. Look at that, that's all of these categories. So others, uh, and um, Michelle, I don't know, your hand is still up for you. I just want to make sure that, okay. Um, others, other people, come on, let's, let's talk about this. <clears throat> Dr. Taylor, it's David Bills. Um, yes, sir. Looking through the list, and I, I find it very interesting. The one that nobody put their name on was you felt unsupported by the university or faculty of a teacher candidate in a preparation program. That speaks pretty highly to everybody's feeling or efforts that we, uh, it's because it asks about feelings about just that we're trying to do our best. Yes. And that's a great observation. In fact, uh, I, I remember that uh, David Bills is our positive person anyway on there. So anytime you need to be uplifted or edified. And so that's that's like good. It's, it's, it's a pat on the back for all the programs we have out there that we don't have uh, people that are feeling unsupported. And I know that typically what happens uh, when there's an uh, issue, we get together and we talk about it. The university, the university supervisor, the you know the the teacher as well. So so this is great that we have other points on this. I may be missing some of the hands. I see a, somebody in the chat. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So there's there's a possibility that people don't want to say anything negative or incriminate them. So I see that in the chat, incriminate themselves and put anything negative about uh, the employer. This is a safe space. Uh, we always know things we can do better at the university level uh, for sure. So um, it may be some things that, that, are, that we can improve. I know that even in our program, we're constantly looking at things that we can improve there, so. Before we move from this activity, anybody else want to share what you're seeing? Anything standing out? Maybe. I'm I'm interested about this collaborating with uh, the teacher candidate because you know they're 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 student teaching. They are working on sometimes the RECA, the CSET. A lot of that should be done already, but sometimes a student is behind. And then they're working on Cal TPA. Uh, so they've got all this stuff going on. And I see that several people are working in several areas to, to help them. Okay, well, let's see, I'm gonna stop my share.
Thank you for participating. And we had, I'm going to say, probably 100% participation. And that's great. Uh, now I just need to get my document back up. And I think I have. OK, so we've done the activity. And so let's, we've already had our conversations about it. And I don't think we have anyone else that has additional things to say about it. So we're going to take a look through uh, at some of the educational data that's available. And it's I'm going to go kind of fast because uh, there are some things in here. I have some national data and we got some state data and things. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on all of it. It's just kind of give us an idea of where we are. So to start off, this is just the public school data for a number of students that we have in the United States. Um, this is just public school. There's a whole lot of more data with, with uh, private schools and broken down by charter schools, et cetera. Didn't get into that. Just, just to give you a quick glance. Uh, and then this is what we're looking at with the teachers in the same field. Um, Dr. So, Dr. Taylor? Yes. Maybe just this me. I apologize. I can't see the slides. I'm not sure. Is that just me? Can others see the slides? Yeah, I I have a a second screen on Professor Bill so that I can see what I think you all can see. Sorry, I'll find it. Okay, you may have to at the bottom click on the Zoom uh, icon and it might show up. Uh, let's see. Okay, all right. Thank you. Katharina says she can see it. All right. Um, and so I'm going to go from there. So that's just to give you a little bit of an idea of the national data. And then in California, and this is all taken from the CalPAD system, which I remember as, as a principal, I used to hate we had to get our data together for CalPADs. Uh, but some of you, I see some smiles. Some of you know a little bit about that. But this is just to kind of get, remember, we have over a thousand school districts. And we have, you know, almost 6 million students. Um, and this is kind of a breakdown. I'm going to kind of move past it. It just gives a breakdown of the students, but where they are. And then a little bit of a, a breakdown in terms of the ethnicity um, for the students. And again, no test on this just to kind of give you the thought of like where we are. So we're just getting a quick glance at it. And then we look at the teachers in California, still from CalPads data. Um, and this kind of gives you a little bit of a breakdown where we are in terms of the, the number. I just want to check in with my colleague, uh, Professor Bills, did you get your data? Can you see it? It's pretty weird. No, I haven't, but keep going because I'm in the minority. Okay. Uh, so then uh, this is kind of, uh, so I, I want to go back. We have the teacher data here, and then we go next to kind of like the, the ethnic breakdown of, of the teachers. Uh, again, from CalPads data, and I just kind of put in some percentages to just help us craft our thinking along the lines. Um, and so just before I, uh, I know I'm moving fast with this data, but I guess what I'm trying to get you to, to see that there's a lot going on in terms of what we do. Now you've got the total number of enrolled candidates, uh, uh, in in the program, so this would be traditional teacher education programs. We can see the the blue represents the traditional programs, but then you have alternative uh, from uh, institutions of higher education, and then others which might not be. It could be somewhere like a county office of education, but just to see the numbers of students that you're dealing with. Uh, and, and a little bit down the road, I'm gonna show at least some of the supervisors uh, what we have here. So that's just to give you an idea. 
Uh, and these are the people who have program completers. So many of you may know that when you go through a program like at Jessup University, we we have uh, surveys completed by our uh, teacher candidates when they complete the program and we get information from there. But you can see there's uh, a certain amount that we have based on uh, the yearly data. So this is not something that I, I just, again, just to give you a little bit of framework for it to think about, okay, these programs that we have and what's going on with them there. So let's look at something. So. This is an interesting document here because still from Cal, Cal Pads essentially, but this represents the supervisors, the clinical supervisors. And so you can see you have some who are adjunct uh, supervising. You have some, we've got the also the cooperating teachers. This is statewide. Uh, and then the number of full-time uh, faculty, the FTEs that do it. So for example, I believe it was last semester, I had my teaching responsibilities, and then I had three uh, students that I supervised. And in some cases to, to balance to the, uh, the teacher workload, if you don't have enough units you're teaching, that's, that's kind of one thing, one thing that happens. And then, uh, then it just goes on. You can look at the number of students in supervised clinical experiences during the academic year. So you can see those numbers as they go all the way up. Um, so you, we all know that we, we want to make sure that they have their, their 600 hours. So these student teachers have these clinical hours. You can see that a majority of the, uh, the student that they received all the way up they have they're mostly in the 600 which is the required area 600 to 699 hours there apparently are a few programs out there where the students get more I know there are some year-round programs or residency programs where they may be have a little bit more exposure uh, to actually their clinical hours but this is just to give you an idea there so um, and as you know that there's a passing rate for certain um, tests and uh, w and even within those tests, so for example, uh, Cal TPA, uh, cycle one, cycle two, there are differences in the passing rate between one and two. I think more people pass the uh, Cal TPA cycle two first and then cycle one, which is kind of ironic because it's a whole lot that they do in that one. I will say this, when I first started uh, working as a university supervisor, I didn't know a lot about Cal TPA and all of the testing. So it was one track for supervising and doing evaluations there. And then it's another track, they're working with people in the university to kind of move forward to, to pass their exams. Okay, now that you have all of that memorized, <laughs> now uh, I kind of want you to, to kind of, uh, we've got some topics in this Padlet and I want to make sure you have a chance. Uh, if uh, if my, my good friend Andrew is available, he's going to put you in groups. And let me just check the chat because somebody is saying, so. okay, so. He's put the Padlet in, in there so you can already go to that Padlet and have that available when you are placed in your breakout session group. And you're gonna just kind of respond to the Padlet with your own ideas in a way very similar that you did the activity, the first activity, but maybe after some discussion. And we're gonna review that Padlet a little later. So hopefully you have those instructions so basically you go to that go to the chat click on that um that link for the padlet go to the padlet you'll be working in your groups and go from there andrew are we about ready to place people in their groups we are um i think you have um some questions in the chat as well so the the, the question about the slides absolutely <laughs> i'm going to post my slides and our resources. Um, so yes, the answer's there. 
Oh, and then the the note that uh, teachers of color was it under ten percent? And yes, it yes it was. I do have to make a point here because sometimes there, since we are in a safe space, sometimes there's a level of guilt of not knowing how to help teachers of color, or or maybe you're not from the background. This is not uh, exercising giving guilt. In fact, I. I'm an African-American male, and I will say that most of my teachers and the teachers that helped me just growing up and everything were white female teachers, and they helped me. So there's a possibility to still be successful. So don't think, uh, as long as we're being candid here and transparent, that, oh, it's it's over. What do I do? How do I help them? You can still still help even if you're not part of a particular group, just like you do in your classrooms, like you did in your classrooms. So just keep that in mind. So I hope I have those questions answered now and let's get ready to go to the breakout rooms. I believe Andrew and I will be in one or two of them. Are you, what's our status, Andrew? I just, because I can't really see anything. Oh, uh, just open the rooms. I believe you should be able to join um, any room that you would like. Okay. I'm going to stop my share for a moment. Oh, I haven't opened all the rooms. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Okay. So we've got uh, a pause, a moment for pause. Any comments on what we had so far? Oh, not because everybody's leaving. So the the one with the picture, uh, I'm not joining because that was just my extra. I see gotcha. Dr. Castleman is joined. Can we get Dr. Castleman in? Oh, she went in the room too. Okay. How are we doing so far, Andrew? Okay, doing great, doing great. Um, yeah, sorry about any any technical issues that have come up. Okay, I'm going to start rolling around to the uh, breakout rooms. Uh, I think that we said ahead of time, but how are we doing on our time? Time, uh, we're going to aim for ten fifty, so about nineteen minutes. Okay, ten fifty for coming back or for us to be finished with everything. Oh, uh, 1050. Yeah, to finish with everything. I, we can keep the rooms open as long as you'd like. Um, okay, so that's I think I can send out a message once I write. Can I send out a message to them? Uh, yeah. Or do yeah. you have to do that? Um, I, I can do it as well. Um, if you've got a specific message, when I close the rooms, they'll have a minute. I think they'll be given a minute to come back. Okay. And is that on the timer? Because I think I had given some minutes, but I want to see how this uh Padlet is going to. Okay, I'm going to just join uh, some rooms now. Okay. Is there a specific time by which you would like me to close the rooms? Or would you like to handle that? Yeah, uh, no, I think I, I would have you close them. Let's see, 1032. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to give them seven minutes. So is that uh, 10? <laughs> well, they've been in there a minute, but maybe 1039. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Okay, we are we're coming back, and uh, I I made it I think to four of the groups, so I heard some good discussion. I want to see though if if we also have our Padlet uh, completed. So I, I kind of, I'm going to just double check on that. So let me see. Can I get somebody, maybe the, the groups, the various groups to, to kind of share out what you talked about? I'll just say one quick thing that uh, I think connecting is really important. You know, if there are any needs, or if, uh, if terms of recruiting, supporting, anything, I think a connection with uh, the teachers of color with the group, either the ones we're trying to recruit or support or retain, you know, whatever retention, there needs to be a connecting point. I don't know if that's a website, an event, or a, a magazine or, or whatever, but there mm -hmm. needs to be some. And uh, the other thing that I think is surveying uh, because you that's really a good starting point for anything that you want to accomplish or what kind of goal is be, is really knowing exactly what the the needs are the issues or you know so i i have and i'm taking it believe it i'm taking notes because I'm i did my type mine there. in i did okay type it in. okay so let's see but you also talk about the connection piece there too so let me see if i can uh, bring this up um I'm hoping everyone can see the the padlet now. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting takes on whether we just, you know, hey, I just met the student and now let's move forward. Or I heard someone in a group, I'm not sure who it was, but someone talked about actually recruiting. Uh, can whoever that was, kind of talk a little bit about that. How do you work on recruiting in this process? And is that recruiting mentor teachers or is that recruiting student teachers? This special town hall edition of uh, Cuomo called The Crime in America. It's going to um, happen on July 31st at 5 p.m. Okay, I, I see I, I think that might, I, I've said something like that, that I do some personal recruitment and believe it or not, I actually go around to some of the churches in the area, in the Riverside area, because they have education departments. And so I'm able to do a short little slide and say, hey, UCR is recruiting. We want yes, to yeah. the color and mm -hmm. everything. So um, I, I do that and, and, be, and I target people that I also know that are in education. I try to keep in contact with different ones. So that's what I meant by personal. Okay. I go out there and try to get them. And I'm hoping that next year we will finally have a multiple subject African American male. Yes. Because I'm I'm starting out and I'm like, we're giving scholarships. But I, you know, so that's what we're trying to do. It's difficult because a lot of them don't want to take a year out of their life to right. because you know they can get their credentials and get their masters and if they're bilingual, which I work with bilinguals also. They yes. so much, but it is rigorous and it right. does take time. Yes. And a lot of them have families. And so what your role, are you uh, a supervisor and I'm you're also, also a supervisor? Professor? Okay. Yes, and I have taught. I have been a lecturer there at UC Riverside. So I try to, but also I have my connections back in the school district somewhere, I, the school district that I retired from. So uh -huh. I'm going and trying to go to the high schools now and try to see what education clubs they may have so yes. we can try to go from there. And ironically, these are some of the things that, a couple of things that you have mentioned and, and mentioned before, before we had uh, surveying and also connecting. And now the idea of going to the churches, I've done this, going to um to high schools get this connection but that's the reason why when i have it down here of helping the teachers it actually starts early so i i did i didn't put it on our initial activity but uh some of the high schools have what they call uh teaching or teacher clubs 
Mm -hmm. and for the universities to kind of line up and go speak to those teacher clubs that's that's kind of one of my goals to kind of get that in when they have their career fairs and other things there but just looking at the padlet here uh so recruiting uh strategy someone wrote that they uh participated by recommending candidates okay oh i'm getting more hands by the way I don't, I don't see, I see that hands are up, but I don't know where they are. So can, uh, Andrew, can you help me? I, so yeah, I saw Eduardo raise his, raise his hand um, a few minutes ago. Okay, Eduardo. I'll, I'll, I'll let other folks talk before I do. Oh, okay. Now we have four hands up, so let's. I, Edwina Magana, I wanted to say, speaking to what you're talking about, I do recall in high school, I I don't know if I was in a, a work, uh, whatever, they, I went to the elementary school for one of my classes. I was able to go to elementary school and be like a helper or teacher assistant. So okay. I do mean, I don't know what program that was in high school, work study or whatever, uh, okay. but it was presented to me as the opportunity and I took it. They say, oh, you're gonna be going to an elementary school and help the teacher. Wow. And I did it. So I don't it, I don't know what program it was. Right. And some uh, high schools even have like senior projects. I've had them when I was a principal, they come from the high school and come down and help that way. And that's good. Uh, Laura and then yes. Michelle. Um, I also work with the undergraduate Calteach credentialing program. And they recently acquired a grant and they are going to work with the um, local community colleges to create a pathway directly out of the community college into the teacher ed program. So that is just beginning, but I'm very interested to see where that goes. Yes, all the programs and new programs. I know we just got a, a grant at, at Jessup for the, uh, you know, basically the, the pre-K to three new credential that's coming. And so we're going to have some some different experiences doing the clinical work for for that group too as they move through with the credential. Uh, um, okay, and Michelle? Yeah, really quickly, I want to share. Um, we're in Ventura County and we're very small. African-Americans are a very small uh, percentage of the population, but we have a very large um, uh, representation across our fraternities and sororities. Okay. And we do a lot of recruiting. Um, I'm not a Delta or, or AKA, my mom's a Delta and I wasn't going to go down that road to go <laughs> against her. So I'm a link. But what we do with, um, we make sure we reach out to our African-American uh, fraternities and sororities and professional organizations and have sometimes people in those organizations have people in their families. They know kids in college. We do recruitment through personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, outreach, like I said, with our fraternities and sororities, African-American, because we touch UCSB, Northridge, many universities um, through that, through that um, venue. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Denise, I saw a comment from you. I saw recognize my colleague, uh, Dr. Kalsman is here too. Uh, Denise, you said that you uh, did that you went to an elementary school? When I was in high school, yes, I did go to, I, went, I, it wasn't, I don't know what kind of a program or whatever, but I would go once a week to the elementary school and I helped out. Okay. Uh, and that that was great, great, excellent for me. I keep forgetting about that, but that was a great pathway. But we had something I think called maybe Future Teachers of America. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you for sharing that. So we we have some some ideas of so we've got the recruiting, then we've got trying to keep them. And then one of the resources that I put in the, the link to the resources, uh, you know, is something along the lines of, uh, if you listen to us, we will stay or something along those lines. It's just, we have to find ways to, to help the students when they are with us. Just looking at this Padlet though, I can see that everyone has, we have some good information on helping them with the recruiting, word of mouth, churches, et cetera. And then problems that student teachers of colors face, uh, like surviving the teacher education program. I know, and I'm sure you all know that a lot of these teachers are actually, this, the, the teacher candidates, the student teachers are working. 
So they have to kind of try to earn a living at the same time they're involved with all of this that they're doing as we just talked about. Uh, so supporting them there, uh, we've got navigating high school admission pr uh, process. People can do that to help. Uh, and right now, one person acknowledges very little to do with the admission process. We have an opportunity to recommend admission to the program. Good. So I see like the CBES, the CSET, and uh, the RECA, not a lot. Cal TPA, I remember this was one of the areas where I had an area of growth, I'll call it, where I hadn't done a lot to help. I was so busy about what's going on in the classroom and lesson plans, et cetera. Uh, but having a series of dates for completion is helpful. So making that available, I see that. And then the videos and exemplars. I think the closer we can come to bringing our uh, supervisors and our cooperating teachers along with the faculty together, we have a chance of of, of uh, improving success. And then the field placement assignment, some placements I see here uh, require more support than others. Uh, Eduardo, I know you were about to speak before. I see your hand is up again. Yes, sir. So I just wanted to kind of just make the point that, um, that um, I like all the ideas that are being um, suggested and in terms of kind of thinking about it. But um, but if then if we bring in our students and and we don't have the support mechanisms to to keep them, then it doesn't matter where we go or how much money we offer them. They're 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 not going to be either supported or happy or going to leave our program. So I think it's important to continue thinking. I know sometimes we don't have the power, but um, it's important to also mirror right the faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. um, so that they that they have mentors there that they see themselves in um, also to be able to change the content of the courses so it doesn't matter again even if we look like them but if we are saying the same things <laughs> as the a traditional teacher um, then it doesn't matter right um, and right. so we need to kind of really thinking about how the courses are going to speak to um, the the reality and context of teachers of color candidates um, also, too, we, um, we know that they're going to come in um, with uh, additional kind of stressors in their life. So are we so, like the question they asked um, on the on the pilot, how many of us supported them outside of their teaching and, and not just, hey, uh, this is hard or something like that, but material resources to offer them um, in context of like financial difficulties that they might encounter beyond just uh, the, the, the stipend mm -hmm. that, that's given them. Uh, we know also our candidates um, uh, of color have a, a challenge passing CSETs. Um, and so, you know, what are uh, additional mechanisms of support that we can offer them? Um, and so all those thing, things are important, I think, um, that as we're, as we're thinking about all these pieces. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Angela, I see your hands up. So. We're trying to keep engagement. I said my schedule and then there's engagement. So I, I like it that you are responding. So Angela, go ahead. Oh, you're, you're on mute. I get that a lot too. Um, just a quick comment about supporting, um, completing the required clinical hours as student teacher. Mm -hmm. um, last year uh, was my first year as a supervising teacher, but a supervising uh, Anyway, um, but I have worked in the public school system for over 20 years, and um, I feel that the university that I'm affiliated with, CLU, mm -hmm. um, has very clear um, expectations of what is required of us university okay. supervisors, and I find that I had one um, student in particular, a student of color, who um, was going through some family um, issues. She, um, and she, what, how I encouraged her to continue the program, which she ended up finishing, is just we're required to have our, our teachers, our students come up with a weekly reflection 
And yeah. that to me was very essential in making her come out and share what it is that was holding her back and maybe think about just dropping out of the program. And I think having worked with her for a year, I think that expectation of constant communication that's required of us by the university um, ended up helping her finish the program. That's, that's great to hear. I, I think I want to capitalize on what you said because there are uh, some student teachers of color bring baggage into the classroom and sometimes you might not even have a good chance to, you know, they may be doing things beyond what what you uh, would expect. So you, you have to build up that trust to even get them to share with you. And so uh, I just wanted to know that once you can do that, then you can kind of get somewhere with them they might be willing to share. Um, and I can see now that, man, our time is flying, I, but I'm just going to go ahead on. And uh, we had a group discussion uh, planned, uh, but we've already talked about some successful things that people have done. I do want to just kind of touch base on some of the research of why uh, teachers of color leave. Uh, they're listed in these bullets that I have here, antagonistic work culture, feeling unwelcome and invisible, feeling undervalued, uh, and then feeling like they don't have the academic freedom to do, to move forward, uh, lack of support, uh, professional development, opportunities they don't want to come and say I don't know this I don't know that and that kind of stops things a little bit from happening um and then uh I see Eduardo you said teachers of color don't have baggage but challenges yes let's go with the challenges and not baggage uh and then negative financial and uh psychological impact just thinking about the idea of having to work and do a lot of other things because they may be in a lower financial status and so they may have to work on top of all the student teaching and so some of the things that that are at the legislature now about like paying paying student teachers i know there was a bill to do that these are things that could really help some of them substitute but there may be a limitation on how many they can do etc but um I know we're very close and I'm supposed to give you a break. Uh, I had the barriers listed. I'm going to put this PowerPoint in our resource section for this course and you'll be able to do that. You can, my email is also on the PowerPoint. So if you have some additional questions. Um, so the we didn't get our second uh, you know, work together, but we did it as a group. So that's fine. And I guess the the last thing I would say, I was going to take things from you, but I'm going to probably review this recording and kind of go from there. And then um, we'll come up with some actions that we need to take. Some of the things there, spend extended time. This has kind of been brought up before, collaborating with the, the teacher candidate and also with the, the university and then modeling when you can the lessons and uh, looking for possible indicate indicators because they may not always tell you what's bothering them and then uh, remaining in contact beyond because some of them will go through not a one-year induction program possibly a two-year induction program so um thank you very much for that i think that's that's pretty much what uh well there's a book that i wanted to recommend that i just got uh through ascd uh, support and retain educators of color. I have this in the resources as well, but I just did that. And in this book, she lists six things to support the educators uh, of, of color, basically uh, diversity matters that cultivating uh, reflection and self-awareness, assessing and planning for action and coming up with some kind of uh, sustainable uh, instructional supports and making sure that we create an inclusive community. All right, sorry to have to move so quick to the end, but uh, that's, that's my uh, presentation. And I had a model to show you, but we won't be able to do that. Any final questions? I'm gonna stop my share. Thank you to everyone. 
If not, I appreciate you being here and see you in the next one. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Thank you. Appreciate it.